On October 19, 2017, astronomers detected the first interstellar asteroid, or maybe comet, passing through the solar system, Oumuamua. It had a brief encounter with the inner solar system and then hurtled back out into interstellar space. Once astronomers noticed it, they directed the world's telescopes on the object, but it was too far away to reveal anything more than a faint dot. Until now, we've only been able to study objects in our own solar system. We have no idea what the rest of the Milky Way is like. But we were too late to catch it. No spacecraft was ready to make a quick intercept. Well, scientists aren't going to make that mistake again. The European Space Agency announced their plans to build a comet interceptor, a spacecraft that will lurk out at the Earth-Sun L2 Lagrange point, waiting for a long-period comet or interstellar object to pounce on and give us the first close-up view ever. There are two kinds of comets in the solar system. There are the short-period comets that orbit the Sun on a regular basis, and the long-period comets, which come from the Oort cloud and we see them only once. The most famous of the short period comets is Halley's Comet, which makes its closest approach to Earth every 75 years or so. It follows an elliptical orbit around the Sun. At its closest point, it's half the distance from the Earth to the Sun. At its most distant, it's 35 times away from the Sun. It's during this sweep past the Sun when the surface of the comet starts to sublimate, throwing gas and dust into space. The constant stream of particles coming from the solar wind interact with this gas, and the comet forms a tail. In some cases, you need a pair of binoculars to even see a comet. In other cases, the tail is giant and dramatic, stretching across the sky. Seriously, a bright comet is one of the most stunning objects you'll ever see in the night sky. Unfortunately, it's been decades since we've seen one. The last time Haley visited us, was in 1986, and the European Space Agency in Japan were ready to see the comet up close with their spacecraft. It was ESA's Giotto that made the closest approach to the nucleus, bringing us the first close-up images of a comet's nucleus. As it approached the comet, instruments detected more than 12,000 dust impacts peppering the spacecraft, including one that almost took it offline. At its closest point, Giotto got within 596 kilometers of the nucleus. And its images showed us that a comet is actually quite small and dark, with bright jets of gas and dust that blast out of its nucleus. It swept past the comet at a speed of 68 kilometers a second, just a few brief moments to take close-up pictures. Giotto went on to make another encounter with the comet Grig Skellirup getting within 200 kilometers of the surface of the icy object. Europe continued its study of comets with the Rosetta mission, which launched in 2004 and took 10 years to reach its target, 67P Churyumov gerasimenko Unlike the previous flyby, Rosetta went into orbit around 67P, taking close-up images of every part of the comet from an altitude of just a few dozen kilometers. Rosetta even attempted to send a lander down to the surface of the comet. And it wasn't just the Europeans exploring comets. NASA's Stardust mission retrieved a sample of dust particles from Comet Vild 2, returning them back to Earth in 2006. NASA's Deep Impact mission crashed an impactor into 9P Temple in July 2005, excavating a huge amount of material into space so it could be studied by the flyby spacecraft. Spacecraft have studied the short period comets. The long period comets are another matter though. These originate in the outer solar system in a vast region filled with icy objects known as the Oort cloud. This cloud has never been observed directly. Instead, astronomers have found comets that take more than 200 years to go around the sun. Some might even take thousands or even hundreds of thousands of years to complete an orbit. These are pristine objects, largely unchanged since the birth of the solar system. They hang out in the Oort cloud until some event kicks them into a trajectory that brings them into the inner solar system. 
Maybe it's an interaction with another comet, or maybe a nearby pass of another star or brown dwarf disrupts them into an orbit that brings them in. Some just crash directly into the Sun, like this incredible comet observed by NASA's SOHO spacecraft in 2016. As it careened into the Sun, it was going 482 kilometers per second. Others sweep through the inner solar system at a tremendous velocity and then head back out into deep space. We'll never see it again in our lifetime. To study one of these comets could be an incredible boon to science. The challenge, of course, is that they're unpredictable. A long period comet can come in at almost any angle compared to the Sun, and they're almost invisible until they pass within the orbit of Saturn or Jupiter, and the solar wind is strong enough to push out their tails. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, the European Space Agency is planning to send a mission to do exactly this, to study a long period comet close up, and we'll get to that in a second, but first I'd like to thank Frederick Crow, Felix Lapointe, Joe Valenti, Stefan Mikalski, Jacob, and the rest of our 794 patrons for their generous support. They contribute so that you can see these videos and we can make them freely available to anyone who wants to learn about space. Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today and get in on the action. On June 19, 2019, the European Space Agency announced that they had chosen a comet interceptor for their next fast class mission. ESA's FAST, or F-class missions, are designed and built with the shortest timeline, from selection of the mission to the launch pad in less than eight years. They need to have a total launch mass of less than 1,000 kilograms so they can ride piggyback with a larger medium-class mission. We talked about the aerial planet hunting mission in a previous episode. This is the space telescope that will directly observe and measure the atmospheres of 1,000 known exoplanets. Ariel is launching in 2028 to the Earth-Sun L2 Lagrange point, 1.5 million kilometers farther from the Earth out into the solar system. The Comet Interceptor mission will actually be three separate spacecraft, which will fly together to the L2 Lagrange point with Ariel. Then they'll lurk, waiting to pounce on a target. New observatories are coming online in the next few years, which will dramatically increase the number of discoveries of long period comets and interstellar objects. The best example of this will be the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope under construction in Chile, which will observe the entire sky every few nights with incredible sensitivity. It'll spot faint new comets earlier than any method we have today. Starting in 2023, LSST will be fully operational, searching for comets every night. The Comet Interceptor will wait for months, and maybe even two to three years, and then when astronomers think they've got the right comet or interstellar object, ESA will send the command and the spacecraft will strike out on an intercept trajectory. A few days or weeks before the encounter, the spacecraft will break apart into three separate elements, two built by Europe and one built by Japan. Together, they'll have all the instruments needed to study a comet, including a visible camera, like the one used by the Mars Trace Gas Orbiter, dust, field, and plasma sensors that flew on Rosetta, an infrared camera, and ultraviolet sensors. The most likely target will be one of those long period comets, and if one doesn't show up within five years, it'll be sent to a backup short period comet. But the real bonus would come if another interstellar object like Oumuamua is detected, a comet or asteroid on a trajectory that will take it out of the solar system again. This would be an opportunity to study an object that formed around a completely different star. Of course, an interceptor is just a quick glance, a few close-up pictures, and that's all. To truly study a long-period comet or interstellar object, you'll want an orbiter like Rosetta, but that takes a completely different class of mission. One idea for this is known as Project Lyra, named after the constellation where Oumuamua was thought to originate. Oumuamua is escaping the Sun at a high velocity. Within just a couple of years, it'll be beyond the orbit of Saturn. Mission planners with the Initiative for Interstellar Studies propose that an interstellar object could be chased down using a heavy lift vehicle like a Falcon Heavy. Even Oumuamua could be reached by 2049 or so. 
I love the idea of a spacecraft getting built without a specific destination in mind. Instead, a comet interceptor would be sent to space ready to encounter the most interesting object that astronomers discover, giving us the first close-up pictures and data of a pristine object untouched since the dawn of the solar system. I can't wait to see it fly. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links so that you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all of my videos are also available in a handy audio podcast format so that you can have the latest episodes show up right on your audio device? Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. And finally, here's a playlist.